my contact with the gay organization has uh, really been uh, very, 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 very significant in affecting my life. has always been a good place for gay people to be and I think that's primarily because of the Alliance. One of the things that when you're part of this organization you're not alone anymore. And we do great things as an organization because we're not one individual. This agency would not have lasted as long as it has had it not been for the really strong support and commitment of the community. To understand how it survived to become what it is today, it's important to know how it started. What is now the Gay Alliance began in 1970 on the campus of the University of Rochester, primarily as a student organization with a different name, the Gay Liberation Front the first phase of the courageous effort, the first faces of courage. Bob Osborne, Whitey LeBlanc, Karen Hagberg, R.J. Alcala, Patty Evans, Walt Delaney, and Bob Crystal. I walked down to this lounge, the only two women, Karen Hagberg and Pat, they were still wearing dresses and they had pigtails. And, and then there was the flamboyant gay man and, you know, a couple other gay men. And I just kept walking. I, so I didn't attend that first planning meeting. I was uh, really fearful about coming out on that campus. But when I did come out, and it was uh, right after our first meeting, we held a dance. And it was the most wonderful experience of my life. As the Gay Liberation Front grew over the next few years, it attracted more and more non-students and soon began to outgrow the campus environment. It became obvious that uh, to both the students and us that, you know, maybe we better uh, form an organization in the city and, and, and let the Gay Liberation Front be a, a, an organization for students. So when we uh, landed at Brown Street, which is in the Bull's Head area, uh, a location that was given to us free, of, free to use, it was in the back of an old burned out drugstore, unheated. But a new place, a place of their own to meet, and a new name, the Rochester Gay Brotherhood. The group was a more political organization, but still represented only a part of the LGBT community. Notable by their absence, the women. The women started a group called Gay Revolution of Women, GROW. GROW had their headquarters at the Genesee Co-op, and as they and the men's group compared notes, they began to see that it would make good economic sense for the two groups to share space as well as their ideals. So the men's group moved to the co-op too. So we had a men's group and a women's group, and we were housed in the Genesee Co-op, and so we had our separate offices, and then we started the Gay Alliance of the Genesee Valley as a way that the men and women could work together. What remained of the original effort on the U of R campus also merged with what was now the Gay Alliance of the Genesee Valley. There was the Speakers Bureau, whose mission was to bring to the community an accurate portrayal of homosexuals by providing speakers to local organizations. The empty closet followed too, a newspaper, meant not just to help closeted gays come out, but to inform and give a sense of community and a common voice. And today, with a circulation of over 5,000, the empty closet continues to expand its sphere of influence by going online. We have consistency and we have stability, and that's, I'm proud of that. In the years to follow, the Gay Alliance continued to make the headlines. In the 70s, the talk was that plainclothes officers were entrapping and arresting gay men in Durand Eastman Park, some for simply kissing. And years later, the Alliance organized a kiss-in at the park, marking the beginnings of a new era of tolerance and acceptance and bringing about the appointment of the first police department liaison with the LGBT community. The fight moved to, to City Hall where the GAGV was approved to receive funds under the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act. 
funds to assist the economically disadvantaged or the unemployed with job training. Vicki Russo fought for the funding and in recognition of her efforts was awarded what is now known as the Vicki Cup. Still presented to women who have made significant contributions and bringing about the establishment too of the Vinnie Cup for leaders among the gay men in the community. Nearly a year later, another uproar and another protest when Anita Bryant and her Save the Children campaign came to Rochester. The anti-gay crusader and singer performed at the Dome Arena and the Gay Alliance rounded up about a thousand people to protest. But as long as there are people who are afraid of us and afraid of having members of their family who are like us, um, then I think we have a lot of work to do. One of the most visible figures on the scene was and is Tim O. Maines. He says today that the O is for out of the closet. He came to Rochester as a teacher, then very much in the closet and intending to stay there, his sexuality hidden. But the pressures and the climate of the times brought him out of the closet and to the Gay Alliance, where he found the way to live as a teacher and now as a school principal, an influential member of the Rochester City Council and as an admittedly gay man. A leader professionally, in the gay community and in the community at large. It really changed for me personally a commitment about how I would approach my life as, as I continued to move through my professional and my political career. Another special moment for the Rochester LGBT community came as 1980 neared. The downtown Presbyterian Church stepped into the lead when they became a more light church, granting full membership and welcoming gays and lesbians into their fellowship, an example to the community of the faces of change. Not just Rochester, but the entire country has become more open, uh, that uh, gays can be more open about their sexuality and not face as much danger as far as uh, violence. Still, approaching the gay life, though it can be easy for some, can be much more difficult for others, especially kids and teenagers. But year after year, more and more gay and lesbian young people are finding familiarity and comfort and courage of their own through the youth programs of the Gay Alliance, which today serve over 300 youths. I can come here and no matter what's going on in my life that week, you know, I can just talk to whoever, let it all out, and half the time everyone has either been through the same situation or can totally relate. I walked into the group, you know, thinking that other gay people were like me. <laughs> and I found that we're not a homogenous group. We are a cornucopia. We cross-cut every demographic group, and it's amazing to walk into a room, and very valuable experience for any youth, to walk into a room and meet a bunch of people with whom you share um, a struggle and an experience that is deeply personal and yet at the same time belong to such completely diverse backgrounds, religions, gender identities, ethnicities. The Alliance offers to these young people counseling and support groups, vital because the suicide risk is alarmingly great among LGBT teens and provides both social and activist programs and a forward-looking effort to see that policies are put in place to protect them from harassment and discrimination. And when the adults of the Gay Alliance marched in the Gay Pride Parade, the youth of the Alliance marched with them, side by side, the faces of the future. The crowd loved it. The only people who did it were the protesters, and even then you could see that they were really shocked that that many young people would come out and openly identify themselves as gay in the streets. And we chanted and we held a big rainbow flag, encouraged people to throw coins and it was kind of fun because we showed that these are youth and that we wanted to affect the community just as much as the adults did. They aren't just leaders of tomorrow, they're proving themselves to very much be leaders of today. So for as much risk as there is, there's a huge amount of potential and resiliency that LGBT youth bring, which we could all learn from. Besides the emphasis on the youth of our community and the educational outreach to the community at large, the Gay Alliance has been the spark which started other groups and initiatives that have made themselves known in significant ways. When the AIDS epidemic appeared in the 1980s, AIDS Rochester started as just a hotline housed then at the GAGV. Now, AIDS Rochester is housed in its own quarters, providing testing and a range of programs and resources for those in the area who are HIV positive or who have been diagnosed with AIDS. 
from that initial effort, that's where AIDS Rochester was created. It was a group of volunteers for three years before there was state funding. The GAGV also laid the groundwork for Image Out, the largest film festival in the area, today known and respected nationally. And the group also provided the impetus for the Rape Crisis Center. Besides those visible influences, the Alliance and its prime movers have reached out to touch the community and to plant the seeds for dozens of organizations and initiatives. And from the group's early roots, the limbs of the Alliance have reached into Rochester's and the region's service organizations, churches, the business community, politics, and government, bringing respect and acceptance to the LGBT community at every level. In 1990, the Gay Alliance brought another part of the dream to reality. Bricks and mortar, their own headquarters, in a building of their own at the corner of Atlantic Avenue and Elton Street. A headquarters for the skirmishes and the accomplishments yet to come. When I was leaving, I said, there is one thing that you can give me as a gift. I want the name on the door. And they put the name on the door. And it's been about 10 years now, and only once did our windows get broken. Between then and now, the GAGV has pressed to have military recruiters banned from high schools because of Defense Department policies on gays in the military, and was a part of the campaign to pass domestic partnership legislation for City of Rochester employees and the Human Rights Ordinance. And in perhaps their biggest effort, the GAGV worked along other groups for the passage of SONDA, the Sexual Orientation Non-Discrimination Act, which outlaws discrimination based on sexual orientation. The Alliance also lent significant support to the Empire State Pride Agenda in their 31-year battle for the passage of SONDA. This, along with the repeal of sodomy laws, is seen by many as an opening of the door from which education and change can occur to eliminate for gays the fear to be who they are and to be out in all aspects of their lives. And there's still legislative protections that, that we need in terms of um, the right to marry, um, full partnership benefits and recognition of civil unions. The Multicultural Diversity Program, developed by Donna Redwing of the Gill Foundation, the first recipient of the Walter Cronkite Award for Freedom, will help area corporations like Kodak, Xerox, Bausch & Lohm, and other businesses to create a respectful, safer, and more tolerant workplace environment complying with the requirements of SONDA. We have to be able to recognize that we're here to meet the needs of the greater Rochester community as a whole and not one particular segment. That's why we're working so hard with people of color through MOCA and also with straight allies through uh, gay straight student alliances, through what we're doing with our inclusive culture project with businesses. We want to be able to reach out and be the expert and the spokesperson to the greater community, and we want to involve the greater community in what we're doing. So after three decades of work, commitment, struggle, and vision, the Gay Alliance of the Genesee Valley celebrates its 30th anniversary, fully mainstreamed and a true and valued influence in the Rochester community. Right. Achievement, accomplishment is one thing. Maintaining and growing and moving ahead something else, something requiring financial security. We touch the lives of over one million citizens a year within the Rochester community. To do that, we have to have the funding to continue with the programs and services that we offer. And that funding has to come primarily through private contributions and private donations. The Alliance is on the brink of continued greatness with expanded programming, a website, coordination of the implementation of training for the Rochester City School District in accordance with the district's inclusion of gender identity in their non-discrimination policies, and an anti-violence program. Ahead, the GAGV is looking to work with the Boy Scouts and others to develop sensitivity programs, and the Alliance hopes to move to develop multicultural diversity training programs in the workplace and in the schools. And our youth will continue to be the focal point the faces of youth, the faces of the future. That future looks bright. Your continued personal and financial support are crucial to securing our freedom and our parity. I come almost every week and it's nice to know that even if you had a bad week, you can come and talk about it here and get support. I think for us to be fully integrated in a diverse society, 
is our goal. And uh, I hope that uh, it's not needed to help people come out anymore. That it's not needed anymore to help uh, men and women uh, overcome their own internalized homophobia. I hope it's not needed like that. Right now it is. The Gay Alliance exists and, and now there are so many more better role models in our community. Our goal is to provide safety in the workplace, to make our kids feel like that they have a, a, a positive environment in which to learn, but more importantly for the citizens of Rochester and the, the communities that we serve to realize it's okay to be out and to be yourself, to lead a normal lifestyle and be accepted with equality and parity just like everyone else in this country. As John F. Kennedy once said, there are risks and costs to action, but they are far less than the long-range risks of comfortable inaction. Together, as we create our future, may we all support and challenge each other to take the risk boldly.